apologize, but we had to take a short break, and now we're back, and now we're on the reports of the officials. And Mr. Dice, will turn to you first. Yeah, as I mentioned to you last week, we, we've got the Attorney General's letter. We're dealing with that. We'll be responding, and we'll keep you apprised. Very good. And, Paul, we're going to turn it over to you on, on Old Ramsey Road, and, Lynette, you have the most, so we're going to... Save me for <coughs> Yes. So, Paul, if you would. Sure. In Council's packet, um, you have a memorandum from myself concerning Old Ramsey Road. Just in brief, uh, Old Ramsey Road, after a significant rainfall in July, um, a landslide occurred adjacent to old, the lower section of Old Ramsey Road. Um, that landslide affected the roadway system. Uh, mm -hmm. It progressively got worse to a point when we had to close the lower section of Old Ramsey from, I believe it was house number eight, 1817, which is the last house in that section of road, to Forbes Road. Uh, that section has been closed. Since that point in time, uh, municipal staff, along with the municipality's consulting engineers, have done site investigations. We met with the Department of Environmental Protection, which plays a large role in this uh, reconstruction because um, there is an active water course adjacent to the road. They sort of dictate what you can and cannot do. Correct. Um, in speaking with them, uh, a soldier beaming lagging wall is the preferred way of repairing um, this slot area. Uh, it's very similar to what we did at Taylor Street. Um, inspection of that segment of road showed two other areas that are near failure uh, that should be repaired at the same point in time. So what you have in your packet um, is two options that uh, we're looking at with a, a, an opinion of the price to repair this, either by doing the three sections or doing the entire length. Um, both of them will give you sticker shock. Um, they are very lengthy. The process to have things done is that you sort of have to do the complete engineering design and submit that to, uh, they call it a dual permit, which goes to the Department of Environmental Protection as well as the Army Corps of Engineers. That process takes about nine months for approval through those two entities. Um, so it's going to take about three, three months to do the, the engineering nine months to put the process through the the uh, <coughs> Corps of Engineers and the DEP, and then about another three months for construction if we get to that point. Well, let me ask you an honest question, Paul. Yes. What do you recommend as the engineering staff? Um, here's, here's my opinion. The option two, if you look at it, is repairing this, the three sections. This type of wall system, you can add on to. That's one of the, the nice parts about it. So you can add on to it at a later date. Um, my fear of doing this is that you build those three sections and then the section in between fails. And now you're back to square one. But we're going to design so the entire design is done in the beginning. That way, if, a, if another section does fail, you can just add on to it. The engineering is already done. But the two options, I mean, your option one is about... 620,000. Option two is 1.2 million. Well, could, could it be pipe? We had that discussion with DEP and uh, they laughed. They said absolutely not. They laughed. They give you an explanation? No, they just said that uh, you can go through the process of doing the analysis, but uh, uh, they pretty much said that it's not going to happen because of the, you have to look at, uh, at the, uh, the amount of <coughs> water flow that goes to that particular area of the drainage, what, how much water it collects and where it goes to, and they said a piping system went up, would probably, you know, they can't tell you no right off the bat, you know, but if you go through the whole exercise, give it to them, and they take nine months to review it, and they come back and say, no, you can't do that. Um, but uh, they basically said, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and to use, and what is there today is what's called a, an MSC wall or a segmental retaining wall. Uh, that is, they were sort of curious how that was built in the beginning. Uh, they said that would not be allowed, mm. uh, which sort of limits us to a soldier beaming lagging wall, which is what we did on Taylor Street, and also which is on Cabot Road. We did on Cabot Road. Well, what's the chances of that one of the resection failing? Well, I don't know that. I mean, we, we all looked at Until it. Until you actually do the engineering, is that, is that fair? I'm sorry? 
until you actually get your engineering study done, would you have a better idea? <coughs> uh, no, the engineering study was, is just to sort of do a geotechnical review. What is what kind of soils you have? How deep is the rock? Because you've got to design the wall for uh, the loads that you're, you're going to be supporting. Um, you know, so we're going to design it for the entire length. But, you know, if you just want to do three specific sections, uh, the, the design will be done. But, um, you know, it's anybody's get best guess if those other sections will remain. Would it cost more to do it that way in the long run or is it cheaper? It, to yeah, I mean, if you, do, if you do the entire construction now, you sort of take it out of, out of the element. But, you know, you're to a point if you build the three specific sections, um, it may be next year, maybe 10 years before it fails. Um, it, it's hard to tell. And if it fails, and any other, if the other sections fail, will it, it if it takes 10 years to fail, is it going to cause the same kind of problem and does it affect the three sections that you've already built it will not it will not affect the three sections that we've already built no good question it's it, and about. again it, this type of wall system is you can add on to it at any point in time um, you know it'll be designed for that for that um, in case that happens uh, but it's it's hard to tell that if those other sections will remain you know in instability and your recommendation is not to build the entire length. It's just to build well, the three I mean, sections. Well, I mean, from a dollar price, I mean, you can look at it. You're <coughs> talking 600000 mm -hmm. versus $1.1 You know, I, I can understand where, Understood. you know, the cost of that. The, 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 the downside of this whole thing, you know, we all know that that length of road from Kilbuck to Forbes is in bad shape. And this doesn't include any of that. This is just to fix the, just fix the, the slope area that failed and the other segmental retaining wall that's failing it doesn't fix the entire roadway length so does there's, it, a, it, there's a price there to do that oh how many years ago was that last address that road i, I know we 1993 is one is one construction and it was started it, it, it went into the 94 year around a million dollar it was seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars at the time now is it repaved then yes yes the entire length was repaved at that point well, let me ask you another question, Paul. How soon do you need a decision from council? I assume soon. Well, I mean, as some of these councilmen have, and, and I receive calls probably weekly from residents wanting to know the status of, of the road when it's going to be opened. Um, you know, of course. So, in other words, the sooner the better. Then. Is that sure. I mean, and I understand the residents' concerns. I mean, at this point in time, you have one way in and one way out of that neighborhood. So, no temporary fix, right? No temporary fix. No. The, the failure of the roadway is past the center line. Oh, so you can't even uh, bypass a vehicle through there. So are you addressing repairing any of the road at that point? If Just the affected areas. Because those areas will be removed as part of the reconstruction of those segments. Okay, and, and you and I have talked at length before this failure, not about the potential for this failure, but the, the poor condition of that road in general with the, the water problems that it has, it, this doesn't address those water problems and, and wouldn't be able to address them. You still need the French drains and everything else you need under the road system in order to take care of the road proper. That's correct. Excuse me, that's correct. But that has, none of this, that other stuff has any effect on building or repairing these sections. No, it's a separate issue. You're probably, and I think I put it in here, Mr. Herb, it's to do those types of work, you're looking at another 200000 Right. You, you've told me that in the past. <coughs> so I just sort of want to give Council an update on what where we're at with it. And uh, I know we're going to be talking about capital improvements. But again, there's a large lead time to prepare the engineering reports to give to the DEP and, and, and the Army Corps of Engineers. One more question, and then we'll move on. Um, what would it cost to do just your part of the engineering, just checking things out? Do you have an idea on the cost? It's about $60,000 to do all the engineering. Maybe um, this council should consider uh, if there's any money that we can take out of the 11 to 13 transfer, at least let you get started on that. And that's for your old decision on that, but I would think that would be sure. appropriate. I mean, that would, that would give you... You know, you're about a year um, ahead of schedule because three months for 
you know, to do the well, survey. Well, that's what I'm counting on. Your three months, you're saying right. that and it then the nine months that. at the review period. Well, again, uh, that's counsel, a that reasonable thing to do. I mean, it, I, I've gotten a lot of calls on it. I, I, I've heard that Dr. Griesock has gotten calls on it. It's a big problem for that entire area. So, Absolutely. I, I know I, I support it. Well, I think it would be appropriate, but that's certainly uh, where do you see any council um, action. Where do you see any money that could be used? Um, to be honest with you, we're finishing up the resurfacing program, mm -hmm. um, and actually by next month, I'll have the final figures with that, and there may be some money left over from that. Did you already transfer some of that for a little bit 22? of it was transferred to okay, so there's the still more in addition. Yes. Them. I'm thinking, yes, because we pay on actual quantity. Mm -hmm. And we're done, so I should have those Number. finished by next month. Very good. Any other questions or comments for Paul? Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Clarence, we'll go to you. Steve. I have no further comments. Oh, Mayor, one more thing. I'm sorry. No, sure. Go ahead. Um, in your packets, uh, when the packets are made, they're all black and white. I do have some color copies that the photos would show a little bit more clear if you need them. I already have them made. I'll give them out. Thank you. Uh, Steve, you, I'm sorry, I you said nothing. I you said no. Okay, Diane, please. I mean, I just want to remind everybody of the upcoming events at the Convention Center. The International Gem and Jewelry Show, show will be October 11th through 13th. Again, $8 for adults, and it's good for all three days. Mil military ID, it's free. No children under eight are permitted. Westpac's jo Fall Job Fair, October 16th, $10 walk-in fee. Fall Pan Coin Show, October 24th through 26th, and admission is free. Gunmasters. Gun show, show masters gun show is the 26th and 27th, $9 for adults, children 12 and under are free. And again, I uh, uh, wish, hope, have everyone have a happy and safe Halloween, which is coming up on the 31st um, from 6 to 8, I believe. So please watch out for the kids going around trick or treating. And finally, again, visit Monroeville, still needs part time drivers. Um, they can have an immediate start date. The requirements are a valid CDL Class A license. Um, the rate of pay is $15 an hour, and they primarily are needed for nights and weekends. And please call um, Visit Monroe about 412-856-7422 if you or if you know anyone else who's interested. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. Yes, Mayor. I'd just like to welcome Franny Castile to the Human Needs and Resources Board. <coughs> With that, I have nothing. Very good. Lois. Yes, Mayor. I just want to get some uh, announcements out. I made Thursday. Um, Monroeville Historical Society presents uh, its Heritage Day Festival Saturday, October 12th, 1 to 5 p.m. There are demonstrations, music, there is no admission charge, there are a lot of activities uh, of, uh, the, the, of the past, creating yarn, <coughs> corn husk dolls, playing fishing games, painting pumpkins and stones, making a big scarecrow using a laundry washboard and clothesline, seeing how wool is spun, eating popcorn in a, in a fireplace, um, tasting popular lamb cake and churning butter, which is a big activity, baking bread, and then sampling both of them with apple cider. Um, that again is Saturday, October the 12th from 1 until 5, Heritage Day Festival. Um, I'm not sure whether this is a sold-out trips and tour, but I want to mention it one more time because the uh, trips that are being run through the Senior Center uh, is announced, uh, and the one that is the latest uh, to sign up for is the Meadows Casino Trip, Thursday, October 17th, and $24 per person includes a $15 slot play, $5 food credit, and a bus driver's tip. I have a few uh, other items, um, some, actually all the rest of these come from comments from Thursday, um, and there are a lot of historical references made, some by people who were on council, and people who were also referring to the past, uh, for instance, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, the French diplomat, did come to the United States in 18. 31 at the age of 25 and he was here to observe and report on the state of American democracy. I'm really encouraged that history is brought up during council meetings because there's much, much history that we should look back on and I think I mentioned one 
tonight on around 2000 <coughs> with council. And I think it's a good thing that per persons come up to the podium, that they do more than look at the local news to observe what goes on in Monroeville. And uh, of course, it's healthy, very healthy to ask questions. However, uh, when I heard what was expressed during part of the Citizens' Night about how strange it might have been to have someone actually knowing more than what they did, uh, which, you know, uh, was a a comment made about someone that produced suspicions on the motives of reporting it. I really thought at that time that I could have sworn that that person was actually talking about Lou Smith. I was wrong. Lou quoted uh, De Tocqueville honorably, and then he proceeded to report how he followed up the process of how four newly hired policemen spent uh, from our local coffers at a particular uniform shop there is routinely so much minutia, I call it, in, in what he brings up here. But, but what was more recently alarming is hearing him threaten members of council and, and the manager. And, and knowing that Lou carries a little gun in his socks at times when he isn't wearing his shorts. And knowing that he's on patrol lately out in the neighborhoods of other members of council. And is all this following municipal employees and referring to how many playbooks he's seen, but he's not admitting that he's not going to tell us about these playbooks that he's seen. Is it just a coincidence or is this just another form of what I consider creepy behavior in the form of stalking? Regardless, I'm gonna ask Lou politely that he remove his gun before he comes into this chamber and, and I think that would go a long way and I'm, I'm serious about that. I don't want to be dead serious. I'm serious about that. You know what, young lady? Lou Smith's a friend of mine. You Excuse should be ashamed me. of yourself. This is my council report, I and really I don't think that it it's yours. I think you've had your chance. Yeah, have a good evening. I will have a good evening. Okay. Um, I have one more thing. Uh, speaking of history, and um, it's about Monroeville old-time politics. Um, William Boss tweet exercised dictatorial powers in New York City as the leader of Tammany Hall during the 1860s. Boss Tweed controlled a patronage-driven system of local government. Patronage has it at its very heart the ability to appoint supporters to jobs within the city. In addition, the so-called Tammany machine controlled votes at polling stations. This style has been the staple of closed local governments throughout history. So when I took the advice of the last person who was legitimately voted into the third ward as councilwoman, which means I looked in the mirror and I decided the best course of accountability, I'd already realized what I'd be up against within this political machine. Monroeville remains a good old boy club. I already realized that I was not a multi-generational uh, who had a Y chromosome. I realized that I'd be driven into the ground with a fury of a Dick LeBeau design blitz. I've heard the machine's message and, uh, you know, who, who couldn't care less about the law. If we do it, it must be legal. Certain fire chiefs demonstrate good old boys closed operations. Anyone or anyone or group that asks questions or seeks information is immediately attacked and intimidated publicly. The insiders must protect their secrets. It insulates them from accountability. It makes them immune from criticism. Even though they are a public service entity, this begs the question again, what are they hiding from the public? The mayor has led verbal assaults during meetings directed at council women for five years now and this year he specializes doing his best to break the manager just as a new team of good old boys did right around 1998 to 2000. The same lamenting each month about rumors out of the same group of mouth breathers parading up here don't even care where the rumors were generated. I wondered what the return of investment is for those whose pockets are lined so they could distort on local media, including those robocalls. And what does it say 
when um, planned inaccuracies are served up on a platter to the public via the local weekly penny saver. Note that disclosure of protected health information violates the federal HIPAA laws. And breach of police intelligence is another significant law. But we don't care about the law. If we do it, it must be legal. We can choose which laws we like and which ones we're going to comply with. If a family or business moves here, they are expected to pay their taxes, but don't question or bring outside experience into this closed shop. The mayor should not be a front man for the good old boy network, including Boss Tweed and his supporters. Monroeville decided to continue this tradition in last May's <coughs> primary. The fall general election will, will in all probability, place these individuals in control of council. So what kind of government should we want? Voters have a choice. Number one, they can choose a government official that is prepared to carry out their functions honestly and without regard for personal gain. Or they can choose a patronage system, uh, a, a jobs program system for supporters, family, and those benefiting from local taxpayers. Their council preparation would only consist of asking the boss, how do I vote? Thank you. Stop picking on Clarence. Somebody come back you. Nick. Yes, Mayor. I would like to uh, address uh, Mr. Pacusa and Mr. Terrell from uh, Monroeville Soccer. Also, some individuals from soccer here tonight. Also, members of the Baseball Association. Um, Mr. Lehman, who's the president of baseball, he actually was at our rec board meeting last night. And uh, what we really need to stress as far as the conversation from the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board, which I'm the liaison to, um, by no means does anyone discount what these organizations have done for this community and what they've done for these fields. We, um, there was uh, issues brought up by the auditors that we decided to act upon um, with the baseball and soccer agreements, with the scrap metal policy. There were some other issues that we decided to take care of. And with the baseball and soccer agreements, it, it's they're very similar to what has been done in the past. Baseball and soccer have put a lot of money into the fields. Um, what they typically do is they submit the receipts to the municipality. These receipts are in the ballpark of $10,000, and that's what the agreement has been over the past years, few years. Um, but it has been, you know, on a handshake. And uh, I like working on handshakes, but unfortunately those, those times have, have changed. So we're doing a few things. We're just trying to tighten things up with the paperwork trying to act upon what the auditors pointed out to us um, and and also too I mean we mentioned other areas where there's baseball and soccer um, not only Monroeville but every organization towns across Pennsylvania across the United States they're very much actually absolutely volunteer driven for what these parents do coaching volunteering I mean so many things it, it's, it's it's endless um, more often than not though it's not set up the way that we are set up here in Monroeville. There usually is some sort of agreement or, or, or rental fee or, um, or the volunteers are actually the ones maintaining the fields. Um, our community park budget for 2014 is $350,000. Now I totally, I'm sorry, three, yeah, 351,000 for 2013, 375,000 for 14. By no means is it all baseball and soccer but the $10,000 is about less than 3% of that amount to maintain those fields. Um, with the agreement, we do allow baseball and soccer to run the concession stands to, to potentially um, profit from those facilities that we do maintain. Um, and surrounding communities do very similar things. Um, <coughs> in Plum was mentioned, the borough, what they did, they supplied just the earth, the rough grade land for the organizations, and the organizations are the ones that actually paid for the development, and they maintain the fields and the complex, including the concession stands. So we're not trying to do anything out of the ordinary. We did try to crunch some numbers, and the $10,000 is, is less than what it would have been if we were to go through a concession stand fee, a percentage of the concessions, electric and, 
and utilities fee, management fee of the, of the property, it's far from perfect. And we understand that up here. We also understand that in the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board, the members that did vote on this, they absolutely understand that it's not perfect, that there needs to be some tweaking. Um, my personal opinion, I, I do believe there are differences, differences between baseball and soccer. Uh, you know, baseball, the, the four fields of the complex, five fields of the complex, um, they are fenced in. They're locked down. Um, they primarily benefit from the lights. So I do agree that there are some differences here between soccer and baseball that we really need to iron out. Um, and like I said, the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board are very eager to work with baseball and soccer to try to tweak this a little bit, but we felt $10,000 was a good starting point because it did mirror what we've been doing for so many years, but we're just trying to get it on paper. And uh, hopefully moving forward, we can figure out what's best for both organizations, for us, but by no means are we sitting here trying to discount what, what these parents do and these organizations do for the municipality, but we're just trying to um, get a good symbiotic relationship here. We do put a lot of money from tax dollars into those fields, um, and we're just trying to do its best. So we will further, there will be further discussion on that, I am sure. Um, I want to apologize the, uh, during the ordinances when we um, motion and second, and there's time for discussion, I didn't get a chance to really discuss the uh, civil service agreement. Um, I was a little slow on the uh, on the response there, but I just want to rec uh, commend the Civil Service um, Commission for updating the ordinance. Um, up to this point, the um, the position of detective was not in the Civil Service Agreement, and they have put that in there. And that, I know that's been a lot of discussion um, over the past several months. So hopefully, this does clear it all up. That yes, it is a Civil Service position; it's in there, and no one can argue that. Up to this point, it was not in there. But now it is, thankfully, and that's a, that's a positive thing um, for the Civil Service and for Monroeville and for the Police Department. I did vote against the uh, ordinance, though, and the reason being is because in that ordinance, we actually lowered the test scores for advancing um, promotions, which I was not in favor of. I do understand that they try to go some surrounding areas, but uh, you know, I, I think that we should expect more in Monroeville. We certainly pay our police officers very well, and uh, I don't believe that lowering the um, test scores was a, a positive thing. So that's why I did vote no, but I do, like I said, I want to commend the Civil Service for um, adding the detective language in there, and all in all, I think uh, it'll be a positive thing, hopefully. So, and lastly, Halloween is coming up. Halloween fun night through the Recreation and Parks uh, Department. They have their annual Halloween fun night. It's October 26th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the community park. It's always a very nice event. Last year wasn't, it, it rained, but uh, mostly it's a very nice event. But they have hay rides, they have costume contests, pumpkin carving contests, a lot of great uh, games and, and food. And it's a really nice event. So that is Saturday, October 26th, 6 to 8 p.m. at the community park. And there'll be details on the uh, website and also on TV 15. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Nick. Burn. All I have is um, Crossroads is having their annual craft fair on October 19th. And check with your local churches and the mall for other safe um, Halloween activities beyond what Nick just mentioned. Thank you, Burn. <coughs> I'm just going to make a real quick comment before uh, I turn it over to Lynn for her report, and then I will wrap it up at the very end in regards to uh, Mrs. Drumheller's uh, in, in accusation that I attack just the uh, them as female, her as a female, or any of the females up here. Um, I, I didn't attack them. I attacked the, the issue. Uh, when you sit up on this seat, not everybody's going to agree with you like they always don't agree with me. And they have attacked, I've been attacked just as much as anybody sitting up here. That's part of the job that, that you have to deal with. And if you can't deal with it, you shouldn't sit here. And then the other thing is, if, if she was so right in all her statements, I think the primary spoke very clearly. The voters spoke extremely clear on what they wanted and what they did not want. And then I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm probably going to go a little bit out of order. The first item on uh, my report is the council permission to donate an old police vehicle to East Pittsburgh from the retired fleet. Um, I believe East Pittsburgh actually reached out to Mayor Arasenko, who uh, forwarded the information to Chief Pascarella. 
Um, we in turn received a request um, from East Pittsburgh Police Department. They're actually requesting that one of our old retired police cars be donated to them. Um, they're in dire need of a vehicle and just do not have the resources or the money to purchase one. Um, so I wanted to get council's pleasure on uh, what you would like to do with that. Questions or comments on this item before you, council? What do we have that's... Um, our three new police cars just did come in. Um, we, we have several that need to go to auction. Um, the auction we can't really put a figure on, but we usually get anywhere from $1,000 maybe to $3,000 in an auction vehicle, but that's not to say we won't get less or more for the ones that are available. When's the last time we've donated a police car to another police department? I know we've helped out the fire departments, but that's yeah, I know we've though. helped Wall, but I don't ever recall a police car per se. Yeah, so is that a, we have? A, I mean, I'm kind of looking, and I really want to know if we're going to start, especially with like smaller communities around here, because we have start a few a of practice them. that you don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we've done it before. To, yeah. When we've done it with the the fire departments, haven't we asked them to pay at least Kelly Blue Book for it, or or some other thing? I know we've gone back and forth on that discussion. Um, but I, I recall that we've asked them for some nominal fee. I don't remember that we've ever donated to our, even our own fire departments. So we have. it doesn't sound like they have money to. to we, we have donated to the fire departments. I, I, I mean, my there was first just a vehicle in question. To, I can't remember what hall, but yes, we do. We have um, given them to our fire departments. We gave an explorer most recently to number three is what we did recently. I believe that's what Councilman yes. Duncan's referring to. And then we have sold other equipments to surrounding communities like Wall, uh, a fire depart, uh, fire piece of view, a fire piece um, pr in prior year, and they paid for it on a monthly when basis. When you say donate, they're asking for it at no charge. Is that yes, correct? That okay, is I just correct. want to be clear on that. Yeah. I really don't think you're going to set a precedence, and I'm sure because they contacted me, some of you up here just don't want to do that. But let's just be very honest. If we can help them out, I, I, yeah, I mean, they're really in straits. I mean, I'm, it isn't like this is a $50,000 vehicle anymore. The vehicle is, is retired because it has at least 100,000 miles on it. Right now, they have no police car at all. They're, the cops down there are using their own vehicles. Oh, my Okay, that's how bad a shape they're in. So it's certainly your call, Council, but I, I just think this doesn't set a precedence because future councils can say yay or nay to this. I think that just we're helping a neighbor out. I, and, and, just and this has nothing to do with you, Mayor. I, I'm, I'm asking the same questions I've asked every time that this type of question has ever come up. Well, it's pretty clear. You either want to or you don't. So. Well, I think it makes a difference when you find out that they're using their own vehicles. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's I mean, the truth. Get, I mean, how do we confirm that? Because I just can't see... I mean, for liability, I can't see them being approved. Uh, they sweat around. that every day. Uh, uh, um, I mean, I just don't think Chief Pascarella did talk to the chief down there, and that's where that information. Is there any way we can from. get some more information about what they're doing? Because I just don't really. I'd like to know that. I, I can do some further investigating if you'd like to. And what you know, I don't. I mean, some places have gone with state police. Some have combined. Or they have. I mean, what are they going to do? They maybe if they would get one, what are they going to do next? I mean, what do they do? They arrest people, put them in the back of their cars. How safe is that? Uh, I mean, it's that not safe. Make any uh, they, uh, so me whatsoever. What, what are we looking for? Like uh, consensus of council here? Yeah. yeah. Consensus whether to donate one. You know, we I mean, would it take a motion or? It, well, it's before you. You can yeah. either agree yeah. and s say to the manager it's okay, and then you can still get the information. Uh, I, I'm certainly not making that Should up. Make a motion. I, well, would you? I, want I'm in favor of donating a, a an older vehicle. So is that a motion? If if a motion's needed, yes. Yeah. Second. Okay, there's a second. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Erb? Sure. Dr. Greasock? Aye. Mrs. Drumheller? Aye. Mrs. Allison? I'm going to abstain. I don't, I would rather have more information before I vote. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Ramsey? Yeah. Next slide. Just as a point of clarity, oh. uh, <coughs> Plumborough just donated two cars, two police cars to Arnold. Same reason. Nope, no cost. Lynette, if you would, thank you. Um, the next item is just a municipal building water damage report that I wanted to provide to council. Um, Councilman Duncan had provided um, some water damage information a few months ago. 
So the Public Works Department put a report together um, that indicated um, the changing of ceiling tile and where actually the water damage was coming from. So I just wanted to uh, include that in the agenda um, for your review and, and understanding. So. And for the public's pleasure, wh where is it coming from? By um, it, it actually specifies, it actually details um, all the areas, but about 95% of it is coming from Somewhere. either uh, the, the roof situation or an air conditioning situation. About 5% was found to be the window situation. And um, they are actually getting a uh, follow-up quote on making repairs to the window situations that they did find. And that's good. I, I appreciate that. You know, that way we have a beautiful building here. Let's, right. let's keep it nice. Thank you. Lynette, okay. if you would. Um, and then finally, um, on our break, we passed out the 2014 budget for Council's uh, review. Um, I just have a little report that I wanted to read to the public. Um, this year, 2013, has been a very challenging year. Um, one facing the municipality is the ongoing financial issues of stagnant revenue and rising costs. It has been clear from the beginning of 2013 that the 2014 budget development process would be a difficult one. Another challenge was the Allegheny County Real Estate Assessment, which began prior to 2013. Allegheny County was under court order to reassess all properties in the county by 2013. The county stated during the summer of 2011 that they were not able to meet the deadline. Following various legal proceedings, the court ruling ultimately resulted in a requirement that Allegheny County reassess all properties by 2014. Additionally, was that Monroeva was always fortunate to have fund balances available from prior years to offset expenditure increases. For many years, these fund balances were utilized to balance the annual budget. As these fund balances began to decrease over the years, not enough fund balance was available to balance <coughs> the 2013 budget. The mayor and council then determined they needed to increase the real estate millage for 2013 to balance the budget. <coughs> the municipality petitioned and received approval from the Court of Common Pleas to increase the real estate millage from, uh, to 2.431 mills from 2.20 mills. This was the first increase in millage since 1991. Following the increase in millage, further complications continued to occur with ongoing assessment appeals resulting in numerous reductions in assessments. With these real estate concerns in mind and the reality that cost save, costs keep rising, the mayor lobbied, the mayor and council lobbied the administration to be creative with the development of the 2014 budget. The budget process began with meetings with department heads at the end of August. The administration directed department heads to challenge themselves to be creative and review how departmental services could be restructured and staff reduced. Recommendations were submitted by the department heads in which many have been utilized in the final proposed budget. I am delighted to transmit to Mayor, Council, and the citizens a budget that provides for the needs of the community and requires no recommended increase in taxes for 2014. I believe as you review the budget, you will obtain a better understanding of all the changes that have been made and you will find information contained within provides a detailed breakdown of the municipality's operations for next year. I know the public will be watching more closely than ever in the coming weeks as the 2014 budget is finalized. As you know, adopting the municipal budget is the most important responsibility we fulfill each year. It is our most basic duty. Municipal government provides a wide range of services that have a very direct daily effect on the lives of our citizens. Police protection, trash pickup, <clears throat> snow removal, fire and EMS protection and service, recreation, senior center, library, workforce development, and other services depend on our adoption of a responsible balanced budget that adequately funds each of these services. I pledge to work with you and do 
and to do all that my administration can do to maintain the progress we have made in bringing our finances into balance, as well as operate municipal government in an effective manner that lives within our means. I hope that you will make the same pledge. I commit to you and to the people of Monroeville today that I am ready to continue to focus on this budget process and work together in a cooperative, professional manner to achieve a budget that adequately funds each of these services. In closing, Monroeville is fortunate in having a highly skilled and dedicated workforce. I would like to uh, thank the staff for their thought and effort in this document. It does not go unnoticed. I believe the volunteers on the boards and commissions and the mayor and council create a strong team, all focused on making Monroeville a better community and home. Thank you. In, uh, in closing, I just wanted to add that uh, the public hearings and work sessions are Wednesday, October 30th, and Thursday, November 7th. At the beginning of your budget message, too. Pardon me? It's at the beginning of your budget message. Exactly, in yes. Here. All right, now I'm going to, is that it then? That's it. All right, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. As it's been stated, Halloween is October 31st, 6 to 8 p.m. It is now on our website as well as it will be on Channel 15 scrolling. I know many of you called in. Um, we did make that uh, in prior meetings, but again, you'll see it on our both channels. Uh, don't forget, vote uh, this November 5th. Uh, certainly this is uh, a right that has been sealed in a lot of blood by a lot of our veterans uh, who are no longer with us. So please get out there and vote. Here's something that I'm going to read you real quick and then I'll wrap it up for a uh, close on the meeting. It's uh, National Teen Driver Safety Week, October 18 through the 26th, 2013. This comes from the Pennsylvania State Mayor's Association, which I am certainly a member. At its monthly meeting in September, the Executive Board of Pennsylvania State Mayors Association voted to support National Teen Driver Teen Safety Week, which will be observed, as I stated, the 18th through the 26th of this month. The primary reasons were motor vehicle accidents are the leading cause of death among teenagers, and there are few circumstances more tragic than the loss of a young life, which is certainly preventable. Our rallying slogan for, uh, for this point is, all education is useless unless a child survives and lives. National Teen Driver Safety Week is an opportunity to have a community conversation with your residents regarding this important subject as well as to assist your school district in competing, and this is what's important, a $25,000 to a $100,000 grant from the State Farm Insurance Company. They're offering 10 $100,000 grants and 90 $25,000 grants across the country. And the program's called Celebrate My Drive. Presently, there are 3,002 schools that have registered to compete for such grants, making the odds of winning a grant only one of 30. Now, the good news is, is that I will be meeting with the school district tomorrow. We do have monthly meetings. I will certainly present this, and I would ask that all of you please contact the school district to support that endeavor. Uh, I would love Monroeville, or I should say Gateway, to uh, win one of those $100,000 uh, grants. And with that, uh, I'll accept the motion to, looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and good night.